Our galaxy is filled with a lot of mysterious and very, very intriguing stars. But some of the most intriguing ones are also some of the most extreme. For example, this type of a star is known as a wolf raya star. Named after two astronomers, Wolf and Raye, who originally discovered them back in the late 1800s. And although we've discussed these stars in some of the previous videos, in this video I actually wanted to discuss the upcoming study that's going to involve James Webb Telescope that potentially has a chance to resolve a lot of mysteries about these stars and how these stars help the galaxy evolve and help the universe create new important materials. And so today we're actually going to be discussing these stars once again, but more specifically starting with this image I found completely by accident on Reddit. And this is actually why I wanted to discuss these stars, because they create these incredible images and because they create a lot of really unusual effects out there in the universe. So this Reddit user right here recently posted this processed image from the James Webb Telescope that showed us this. This is technically the first image from the James Webb Telescope showing us a very famous Wolf Raya star. And the image by itself is incredible for several different reasons. First of all, like a lot of other Wolf Raya stars and their vicinity, this one really stands out. It's the brightest object visible to us. And this is one of the defining features of these unusual stars. They are generally some of the hottest and the brightest stars in the vicinity, with a lot of them being visible and present right here in the iconic Tarantula Nebula, the nebula located in a nearby Large Magellanic Cloud. And the most extreme star of them all is the distant star known as R136A1 that's essentially the most massive star we've ever discovered. It's over 300 masses of the Sun and would be a really really huge massive object compared to our Sun that you see right here in orange. But before I tell you a little bit more about this image I previously showed you, so what exactly are these stars and how would you define one if you were to look at it in the night skies? Well, the original definition was really in regards to their spectrum or essentially the type of gas they possess and the type of emissions they produce. Normally they have a very unusual spectrum that doesn't seem to have any hydrogen in it, but does have a lot of ionized helium, but also an ionized nitrogen and ionized carbon. And generally this type of ionization can really only happen in some of the most extreme conditions, usually very very high temperature. And so, by having these particular emissions, it means that these stars are basically emitting so many different ionized particles of things that are not hydrogen. Mostly because, in many cases, the hydrogen that was present here was basically expelled and created a nebula around the star. But later on, the scientists studying these objects realized that they do come with different properties, and some of them do actually emit hydrogen as well. And so today there are actually several different classifications of these Wolf Raya stars, with many of them producing different types of spectra. But they're also believed to be a natural stage in the evolution of extremely massive stars. And depending on the total mass of the initial star, they'll probably end up producing slightly different emissions later on. So basically this is just one of the stages as the star advances through its age and then changes into something else. But unlike a typical star, like for example our Sun, in this case, a typical Wolf Raya star, because of the ridiculously powerful emissions, will generally have a much higher amount of heavy elements present on its surface and also extremely high stellar winds. And in this case, if our sun was some kind of a faucet dripping water in terms of the energy produced, a typical Wolf Raya star would be this very powerful fountain emitting so much water all at once. Although in this case, instead of water, we're talking about a lot of elements present in typical stars. And all of this creates these ridiculously high temperatures, sometimes reaching 200,000 Kelvin, making them the hottest stars in the universe. And most of this energy comes from the fusion of helium or heavier elements inside the core. The hydrogen is no longer being fused. Although in other cases, certain types of wolf Raya stars can actually be on the opposite side. They could be extremely young stars, still fusing hydrogen, but also producing tremendously powerful emissions. But that's more of an exception than the rule. The classical version of the Wolf Raya star is a star that's basically reaching the final moments of its very powerful life. These stars also generally produce tremendous amounts of ultraviolet light, which for the James Webb Telescope means that it can technically see some of them, possibly forming in the beginning of the universe. Which is why so many scientists want to study these objects 
with this incredible infrared telescope. And by the way, these stars are so bright that at least two of them are actually visible in the night skies without the use of any telescopes or any other devices. You can see this one right here, and also this one right here, with the naked eye. Despite the fact that this star is at least a thousand light years away from us. And as of today, at least 500 such stars are known to us in the Milky Way galaxy, but less than a thousand of these stars in the local group of galaxies. For example, there are approximately 160 of them in the Magellanic Clouds, and about 150 of them in the Andromeda Galaxy. But they're very common in starburst galaxies, and they're also very common in specific types of galaxies known as wolf rayet galaxies. There should be a bunch of videos in the description that explain all of this in more detail. But back to this original image, and the wolf rayet known as WR140. Here's a slightly older image with slightly less quality, and here's that newer image from the James Webb Telescope processed by the user on Reddit. And one thing you can kind of ignore here are the spikes. That's essentially the result of the design of the James Webb Telescope. But what about these unusual wavy lines? Well, initially it might appear as some kind of a lens reflection or some kind of a processing artifact. It's not though. These features are real and they exist around the star. They're visible slightly differently in this previous image I showed you. And these features tell us a little bit more about the star we're looking at and how it very likely formed. So first of all, this is once again a relatively bright wolf ray star. But it's part of what's known as a spectroscopic binary. Which often represent a single star because of the brightness, but you can actually tell that there are two stars here because of unusual effects. For example, unusual red shifts and blue shifts, unusual wobbles in the orbit, or in this case, unusual wavy formations around the star. Now the main star here is what's known as a O-type star. These are some of the most massive and brightest stars in the universe that are still burning hydrogen. And the wolf Raya itself is the smaller partner. In this case it's slightly less massive, but it's a lot hotter and produces a lot more emissions. Although overall it seems to be also less bright as well. But because these two stars seem to orbit around one another, approaching each other as close as 1.3 astronomical units and moving away as far as 24 astronomical units, they tend to produce very unusual effects every 7.94 years. And so when the two stars approach each other really closely, they create a lot of radiation-driven stellar winds. Super powerful emissions, which only happen every 7.9 years. Generally this is actually known as the colliding wind binary, and in this case WR140 is one of the most well-known such binaries. And so each of these rings that you see here are technically little spheres that represent much higher concentration of stellar wind released 7.94 years apart, with approximately 20 shells visible to us and very likely more discovered in the future as James Webb provides us with even more detail. But based on these observations, it looks like this whole nebula was created approximately 160 years ago mostly because there are 20 shells visible here. But during this close approach right here, the stars also tend to emit a lot more infrared radiation, mostly because they tend to release a lot of dust at the same time. And so all of this would be actually very easily visible to the James Webb Telescope. Which is exactly why this particular study wants to investigate this in more detail by observing the star for approximately 20 hours. But the main idea here being the comparison with various simulations created by the scientists behind the study. But today it's also believed that certain types of massive binary systems can actually develop into wolf rayet stars over time. In other words, it presents us with a kind of a third scenario for the formation of these unusual objects. And this can maybe happen when one of the stars strips its partner of a huge amount of mass, mostly due to the stellar wind produced when these objects approach each other. And so in this case, this could also be one of these stars. It could be a star that was basically produced because of the interaction between its partner and itself, with the partner causing the star to essentially lose its outer shell and to turn into a wolf Raya star. And about one-fifth of all of the wolf Raya stars found in our own galaxy could have been actually created this way. But because a lot of them will also be covered by a lot of dust from the hydrogen released from these stars, it's also generally very difficult to observe what's happening on the inside. But not for the James Webb Telescope that can kind of see through all of this and even produce the beautiful detail that's visible in the image. Even though the star is over 6,000 light years away from us. But unfortunately the study itself is not finished yet 
And so it will take a while before we actually learn more about this star and discover more about it in order to explain some of the mysteries about these unusual objects. Nevertheless, seeing these unusual circular formations around the star is actually one of the main reasons why I wanted to create this video. But if you'd like to learn more about these stars, check out some of the previous videos, like this one right here that you can find in the description. On that note, once we learn something else, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that now features James Webb Telescope as well. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.